Now, a coastal flood warning is in effect from the Virginia coast to New Jersey and the Chesapeake Bay, and that includes Annapolis, Maryland. It's where we find our meteorologist, Mike Seidel, who is live here uh, this afternoon. And boy, Mike, that water has been high here all day. It has. It's slowly rising. We're now just over four feet on the gauge on the Severn River, which is just out that way in Annapolis. We're here uh, in the uh, Ego area. They, I called it uh, mistakenly Ego Harbor. It's Ego Alley. I should know better, being from Maryland. This is where folks bring their boats to show off. That's why they give it the name Ego Alley. But you can see the water has pressed up against these buildings, these restaurants here in the harbor area downtown Annapolis. And, uh, you know, they talk about nuisance flooding, and it does flood here. Uh, this is not uh, rare, but the fact of the matter is this time around, it's probably, or it is already now, the highest we've seen the water on that gauge on the Severn since Isabel in 2003, and that was the uh, bellwether up over just over 7.1 feet. So we've got the water coming up. We've also had some rainfall. We just had a real strong downpour. Winds have gusted so far at the Naval Academy. In fact, their objects came at 2 p.m. Eastern, 38 miles an hour with a a gust sustained at 23. The Naval Academy is just back over there. Take a look at the radar. You can see the reds and oranges coming up at us. It's rotating around the storm, which is way out west over the mountains. And so this is not a nor'east. It's more what you would term maybe a southeaster. So the wind's pushing that water up the Chesapeake Bay and into the Indian, inland tributaries. Talking about the eastern shore, uh, the Chop Tank River, uh, Dorchester County, those areas, Cambridge, also Chrisfield synonymous for flooding. Isabel hit them very, very hard there. And we also have some power outages. We've had wind gusts over 40 miles an hour. Here in Maryland, they're up to 7,500 customers, and about half of those, almost exactly half of those, are right here in the home county of Annapolis, Anne Arundel County. And uh, in Virginia, now 8,500 customers. Most of those have been in southwest Virginia, but now we're starting to see the numbers increase a little bit in northern Virginia. So we've got the wind advisory, and we also have the flash flood watch. That goes until 6 p.m. Once this front moves through, the rain is going to shut off very, very quickly. You can see the back edge on the radar, and the wind's going to back off. The only concern now, and the real concern, is the next high tide. Uh, that is coming up at a little after 1 a.m. Eastern on Saturday morning. So at that point, that's the forecast, right around five feet. That's still more than two feet below Isabel, but that will keep the streets underwater here, down in the dock area, Dock Street, and uh, over here towards uh, the marina and the boats out there. Still some whitecaps out there as the wind uh, is a little lower where we're standing. We've got uh, some pre uh, protection, Jackie. And amazingly, one of the streets that's flooded just around the corner is called Compromise Street. Uh, aptly named on a day like today, Jackie, with a flooding. Yeah, you know, Mike, I'm wondering, it looks pretty quiet uh, where you are there. Are people being smart, staying out of the area, or are you getting a lot of gawkers? Uh, there's a few gawkers down here, but the, there's a lot of, basically everything except what you see behind me is open. There's tons of restaurants. You know, this is a seafood area, uh, restaurants and bars. They're pretty much all open because the flooding is right in this area. As you go up Main Street uh, towards the Capitol, if you go towards the Naval Academy, the elevation comes up. So it's really relegated to this harbor area, much like we're seeing in Philadelphia, down near the Delaware River. You get back towards Rittenhouse Square, City Hall, those areas. You don't have any worries about anything getting there from uh, the Delaware River. It's the areas that are just close by the river, close by the Severn River, also the Potomac and the Georgetown area. National Harbor on the Maryland side of the Potomac also uh, has that uh, higher risk because they're sitting right at the, uh, at the water's edge. All right. Thanks so much, Mike. We'll check back in with you in just a little bit. And um, word on the street is Mike has been indulging in some crab cakes, which you must do <laughs> when you are in Maryland, right? Yes, you have to. And now, a coastal flood warning is in effect from the Virginia coast to New Jersey and the Chesapeake Bay, and that includes Annapolis, Maryland, where a meteorologist, Mike Seidel, is live this afternoon. Mike, you've got water behind you, and it's still going to be going up later on. It is. It's slowly rising right now. Let me show you the water line with the leaves. So we've had a pretty decent leaf drop, and that was the concern with leaves on the trees and power outages. So far in Maryland, last time I checked, about 4,000 power outages. But the water is edging up right now. The gauge on the Severn River, which is just out here, this is what they call Ego Alley, uh, is up to 4.1. Let me give you a sense of the perspective of how high the water got during Isabel. That's the bellwether here. This is Alex Haley. Yes, sitting on the uh, 
on the concrete uh, wall. The water got right up to about his shoulder, right up to about here, seven point, I think, 7.16 feet. So we're not going to get that high, but we are forecasting, the weather surface is forecasting uh, about five feet, and that's going to be later tonight at high tide. Next high tide is coming up a little after 1 a.m. So this water is going to slowly rise, kind of level off a little bit, and then come back up. The coastal flood warning goes until tomorrow morning. So we're worried about one more high tide here in this area. We also have a flash flood watch and a wind advisory going till 6 p.m. Once that front comes through, the warm front, the occluded front, the wind and rain is pretty much going to shut down. We've got sporadic patches of heavier showers. You can see that. Check the radar right now. You can see little areas coming through. We had a downpour a few minutes ago, uh, last about two or three minutes. So far, Naval Academy, just a few blocks away, they've had about a third of an inch of rain and winds gusting right now in the upper 30s. Take a walk over here to Dock Street. We'll show you what's going on as far as the restaurants here. And this water was almost this high last night. I came down to check out the situation and to get myself a crab cake. When you're in Maryland, where I'm from, you got to get a crab cake. They're lumpy, except no substitutes. And the Dock Street restaurant was already closed. They were sandbagged with water going in. And I saw somebody earlier with a broom. So these restaurants were closed. This whole street is underwater. And this is the downtown area. And you go out Ego Harbor. This goes out to the Severn River. And if you look far enough in the distance, you can see the white caps of these winds that are gusting close to 40 miles an hour. So a very windy, rainy afternoon until about 5 or 6. And then after that, the concern solo, uh, the only concern after that will be the tide coming up. And we're expecting that uh, peak with a high tide a little after 1 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. So uh, there you go from Annapolis. And it's not only Annapolis. We've got areas on the eastern shore, Crisfield, Cambridge, Rock Hall, and places on the western shore, too. All these tributaries, the southeast winds pushing the water up the bay, and it's fanning out into these uh, rivers. And this is not unusual. Uh, this is uh, not a, a common occurrence, but certainly not out of the realm of what we typically see when we have a very strong push blowing the water up the bay. Let's go back to Atlanta, get the latest on this storm and what's ahead for Halloween across the country. Yeah, Mike, you know, people who live there certainly are used to this. This, this does happen time and time again. Mm -hmm. Climate change, of course, uh, making that worse, and, and we are concerned about that in the future as well. I know you talked to local officials. Right. Uh, what do they say in terms of how much worse this might be than other previous flood events? Well, this is going to be the worst in 18 years. It's already at over four feet, so that's going to make it the worst at that gauge on the Severn River. So 18 years ago was Isabel, but we're not going to get anywhere near the seven, as I mentioned, about five. So they're concerned. They're also concerned about how the wind may push some wave action up here. But so far, right here, what they call Ego Harbor, they call that that because people come up here during the warmer months and show off their boats. But we don't have any white caps right here. But again, you get out on the river and the bay and those areas. By the way, Chesapeake Bay Bridge is open. Uh, they don't usually have any real restrictions uh, for cars. I'm saying it's open for cars until the winds get up to about 65, then they'll shut it down. But it's open right now. Picos we've seen so far on the bay has been running about 55 miles an hour. Uh, in the future, yes, with uh, rising sea levels. But as I talked to the mayor earlier, Jackie, he said they've already got a plan in place where they're going to raise this wall and uh, take care and cut down on the number of events. He said they used to have 60 a year. Now they're down to six thanks to the pumps, which work up to about four feet. And then then they don't work anymore. So they're really not working at this point. And also what they're going to do with the geography and the terrain around here uh, from the man-made perspective. So they're looking ahead, certainly, yeah. in the next 10 to 15 years. They've got that plan in place. Got a plan for the future. I'm glad you got your crab cake, too, by the way, Mike. Thanks so much.